This talk is a part of a wider summit called Connected Insights. Um, and my name is Varun Malik. Um, so I'm the CEO of a consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is a new age consulting firm. Uh, new age, uh, new age in that uh, regular consulting firms, uh, you know, you a client goes to a partner, client goes to uh, someone who, uh, and give me one second, I'll also share my screen. Uh, so a client goes to someone who, uh, you know, a partner or a director and that partner or director try to, um, you know, get that project delivered by consultants within the firm. Now, uh, our model is quite different in that, uh, in our case, a client comes to one of our partners, uh, the partners uh, find the most relevant advisor, the most relevant subject matter experts from one of our boutique consulting firms. Uh, so for example, if we had a project in sustainability, we would normally go to and to uh, ask her to help us deliver. So it's a fairly different model. Now, we have about 350 boutique consulting firms from all over the globe that we collaborate with. Uh, this summit is um, uh, you know, set up by us and about 70 other firms in collaboration. Um, you know, 2020 was a, was, was a really great year for, uh, was supposed to be a really great year for everyone, right? When it started, it was a very exciting time, turn of the decade, things were getting back on track but obviously it, it didn't turn out as well. So what we decided in 2020, uh, you know, once we recovered from the initial shock in March, et cetera, we decided that we're going to spend 20% of our time in Consolidon. All of our consultants, all of our partners are going to spend at least 20% of their time on initiatives, which are related to giving back and to sharing knowledge, right? Uh, so we started a project last year. It's called the Superheroes Project. We got about 700 business leaders from all across uh, the GCC region um, to help small businesses and micro businesses recover from uh, recover from the downturn. Um, we're uh, we started as well in 2021 in a different way, trying to help businesses uh, recover from the downturn, which is still uh, you know very much in existence. Uh, it's called Connected Insights, where we'll have about uh, 50 panel discussions and webinars over the next uh, seven days, okay? Uh, during the course of this discussion, uh, we will be giving a few giveaways, okay? Uh, so the giveaways are, uh, you know, for example, uh, we're doing six workshops over the next seven days. These are um, slightly more extensive. So three-hour workshops, about $299 uh, to attend the workshop. But what we're doing for every, every webinar for you participants, we're giving uh, three of you the chance to sort of attend that without having to pay that fee. All you need to do is, you know, select the relevant workshop. There's one today for co-creation through digitalization. Um, and, uh, you know, you just have to select the workshop, complete this form, and you can attend the workshop for free. Um, we're also, uh, you know, some of you, uh, you know, who you've introduced yourselves, uh, can be speakers for us in the future for future Connected Insights summits. So we're asking you to complete a form if you're interested in being the speaker at the summit. Um, so there's a few giveaways, just look out for them in the chat. Uh, what I'd request you to do during this discussion as well, uh, feel free to interact, stay on mute when the speaker is speaking, but whenever you wanna speak, you can feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and uh, ask any questions or make any comments. Uh, and so that's from me. I'm going to leave it to Anne, who's a very established sustainability consultant. We've been collaborating for over a year now, and I'm really looking forward to this talk, Anne. Yeah, thank you, Varun. Thank you. And it's really great to have already spoken to several of you and heard what you are doing with sustainability and thinking about. Um, so the session today, we call it sustainability, moving from risk to opportunity. And it's really because many times when I go out and talk to companies here in the UAE, they see, yeah, sustainability, it's a risk, but really it's the opposite. Uh, and we will also in this webinar talk about why it's not even just a, an opportunity, but it's going to be called a, a business requirement over the next few years. 
So this uh, webinar will fall in three parts, I think. Uh, first, we'll have a little bit of background. We can maybe even take some of the things that you talked about before, some of you. Uh, then we'll be talking about why uh, sustainability is so important on a business level, because that's really what we're about. We're not a tree hugging company, um, but we really know that sustainability is a way to become a profitable company and to sustain long term. And then in the end, we'll have a little Q&A &A session. You can ask me anything. I'll also share a link. So if you want to, you can have a, a call with me anytime where it suits you. You can set it up uh, yourself in, in the link that I'm sharing. Um, and, and we're really helping companies all over the world. Uh, I come from Denmark originally. I've been uh, living in the Middle East for the past decade and I love it. I love uh, the heat. Uh, I love sand actually. And um, I've also lived in Germany, in uh, Thailand, Turkey, Malta, uh, the US, and I've lived in Northern Greenland. And one of the reasons I've built a sustainability uh, is that I've seen that the challenges uh, with climate change, it's not something we see only in uh, Greenland where I lived um, for, for nine months. It's also not just something we see on the other side of the world, we see it everywhere. Um, and I believe, and many of the companies you, you meet in these sessions, that businesses are really the key to unlocking how we are going to move forward in the world. Um, my consultancy, the Umbrella Institute, we work with businesses on a business behavioral matter. So we help change the way businesses think about where they are situated and how they can really work with, as, uh, as one of you talked about, the supply chain. Um, because once you start to work with the bigger ecosystem of the company, then you can see that you can also have a very positive impact. And you can take control about how your uh, immediate ecosystem is behaving to their um, uh, environmental ecosystem and, and their uh, people. So that's a little bit about the background and you can ask anytime this is an open session you can either write or you could just uh, uh, even just put on your microphone and say I, I have a question so do that anytime. So let's talk about it. I think uh, one of the key factors is it is the world is a very complex uh, place now we've seen it with COVID. Uh, we also talk about climate change, which is not a simple thing. Uh, one of the ladies here talked about uh, carbon capturing and, and measuring uh, what the output is of the company. Um, and that's not a simple, straightforward line. Uh, there's so many factors to have it in, and companies cannot even compare their carbon footprint to the competitor because they're doing different ways. So there's a complexity level that's rising in the world. And we're trying to help companies to take away some of the complexity and move forward in a very uh, action uh, moving manner. And instead of thinking about the challenges or the risks, we're helping them to start with their work. Um, because even as some of you mentioned as well, you see the big companies, you see some of the name brands, you see Unilever, you see uh, Microsoft, you see many of the, the fancy names they say, we're carbon neutral from 2050, or we have already done this step, 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 and our energy is completely green. But transparency is really still very fussy. Uh, and that's what we have to keep working with. What we also see many times is that uh, the companies that we work with, maybe you don't know the names of them or they're mid-sized or they're just locally based, but they can actually very fast take some of the initiatives that they're already doing and make them international standard and, and, uh, and on a benchmarking level. But they have to have the tools to communicate. So we help with sustainability on a, a leadership level because it's about having your top level management understand that they need to give approval for you to work as a manager or as a director in the company, you have to be able to take the, the decisions and make the technical changes that it takes. And that's often also where we see that there are challenges. Um, uh, I will come to some uh, cases later, but 
what we can see is just like one of you mentioned is even the global companies who are right now saying they're so ahead of all the other ones. The steps they have taken are not that complicated. But when you see a problem from a distance, it somehow seems a lot more difficult than once you start to dig into it. So the Umbrella Institute is really about taking the steps. We work with, uh, with our clients on building a baseline. We talk, for instance, about what are you doing for your water consumption? What are you doing for your other resources, your production? Uh, what can you do for behavior with your employees? How can you engage your employees in taking part of the energy saving and consumption? How can you make your employees uh, an ambassador and talking about it? Because at the core of sustainability is really open communication and, and again, transparency. So the more you can communicate to your employees what the vision and mission is of the company, the more you can have them engaged. We also very often see that leadership uses 100 hours on an initiative. They work, let's say, on carbon capturing. They have sessions. They have consultants like myself. 100 hours, very intense. They've learned something. Then they take uh, uh, middle management. They give them uh, maybe five hours of the same, a little bit more intense, but also maybe a little bit more secluded in the area. And then when it comes to the overall findings and what have we done over the last many months or even years, we have a 10 minute talk to the rest of the company, 100 people or maybe 100,000 people. And we say, yeah, uh, so we have decided to work with SDG number six and number 13, uh, go ahead and use that. And as you can imagine, if you have worked with something for 100 hours, then it's not easily shared to the rest of the company uh, in 10 minutes how they can use this in their work. We see that very often we've seen that, that this is the fact that um, you take for granted that a 10 minute uh, introduction will mean that people on their own is doing their research and, and they're asking questions to top management. That, that isn't how it works. So, in Denmark, we have a company called Grundfos. It's the world's biggest pump producer. And uh, since 2015, they have been working with the SDG number six, which is about uh, clean water and sanitation. And they're working with uh, sustainability goal number 13, which is about climate action. And top management has been in hundreds of videos talking about this on big UN sessions, um, really, this is the core of our business. This is what we're doing. We are sustainable. And then they started working with middle management and middle management said, yeah, we've seen it. I, we don't know what to do with it. And in the end, they found out that this big company with hundreds and thousands of people working around the world, people didn't use it. The employees didn't understand what they were going to use those two sustainable development goals for. So they didn't. Um, but it turned out that, for instance, for sales, there were so many different things that top management had been working on that could be used for the direct sales. They, for instance, could take back a pump uh, that would cost money to otherwise get rid of. They would take it back, they would refit it, and it could be sold to a, a different place and it could be completely refitted, um, which really is circular economy, something many are trying to do. But it hadn't really started, even though it was several years ago that initiative uh, had been set in motion because nobody understood it. So we work very much on, on the internal communication of the companies as well and ensuring that, uh, that there's someone who is communicating the mission and mission. And we come back to the fact that sustainability and sustainable transformation has a way to make a company culture much more aligned than before. Because all of a sudden, you will see that your employees have a common goal. Before it was just that they did sales and some of them had a KPI and it didn't really match maybe marketing's KPI and it didn't match production's KPIs. So they were working on actually in different companies, right? But once you start to implement sustainability, which is a cross-departmental 
collaboration very most often um, then you have to start communicating across this company about what is technical doing what is what can marketing do to share everything that they're doing across how is procurement aligned with the production facilities and how are the the operators of the company really working with the people who are communicating it and this is a big change because uh, in in especially in many mid-sized and large companies we are very uh, we're very used to business as usual right we are doing quite well we're not doing excellent but we're surviving and maybe covid has gone a bit of a dip for us but we're still surviving it still means that there's opportunities to be had when it comes to sustainability because it's a new way to see what your company is doing it could be that you were selling a pump before but figuring out that this pump is actually um, a very uh, energy efficient and very productive way to use your water means that you're now selling uh, conscious water use instead of selling a pump. And it means that you can either tackle new customers or you can go to your existing customers and tell them how good it is when they also need to do their sustainability report, right? You're making their work easier. Um, you're being a good part of their supply chain. And communication is, is core in this. Uh, for many companies, sustainability is also a real way to innovate, very simply. Uh, so we have a uh, the Umbrella Institute, we have a, an SDG sprint, we call it, where we help companies uh, take the 17 sustainability goals, which is somehow sometimes a little bit uh, hard to see as, um, uh, as an overall. Um, but we help them select the handful of, of SDGs that really fit their company the best. And after that, we take them and we discuss, we start asking them questions. So what do we do with SDG number three about health and good uh, well-being? Or what do we do with SDG number six, which is about the uh, water preservation and, and clean water? And it means that these people who are sitting very practically and working with it every day, uh, either selling or marketing a product, they can now share some of the insights that they have from their everyday work when they talk to the client or they talk to the end user. And it's very interesting to see how many of them are already working sustainable and, and helping their clients and, uh, and their supply chain in a sustainable manner, but they're not including it in, back into the company's uh, communication. And they're not including it in their sustainability report or maybe not even making a sustainability report because they haven't made it a technical thing. So that's innovation is actually very close by when you talk about sustainability because it's, uh, it's a topic that has been sitting in the corner for many years for, for some companies and not really been utilized. So it's sitting there, it's waiting for someone to do something. And I think uh, for the lady from, from Germany, for instance, this is a way for you to do it. You can see some of the things you're already doing, take it up again and turn it around, ask some of the questions that haven't been asked before. So for instance, how good are we at helping our clients uh, preserve energy or uh, even communicate uh, what they're doing for the environment? What is also very good about sustainability, because it's this cross-departmental collaboration, is it creates uh, great cultures in the company. Many times we'll see that uh, a company has grown and there's different cultures inside different departments. When you see the sales team, they have one culture for being really high performing. When you go to the, to the technical department, they are very much on quality and assurance and not so much about the high performance, but really about the technical bits. And together, when these departments start talking about it, they can find out that they are actually doing a whole lot of great things. 
and ensuring that the, the quality of the product is great, but they're not talking about it. So it comes back to that again. Uh, it's, it's openness and inclusive uh, discussions in the company that we need to have out. Um, and for leadership, when it comes to sustainability, leaders are always looking to hear what their uh, employees are thinking. But there's not many reasons to talk to them uh, in this manner. But having uh, open discussions and open platforms where employees can share their information and their ideas really means that top management gets our new ideas about what they can take the company to. So we do the same thing when we talk about the, the global goals or the sustainable development goals. This is very often including both top management in the discussion and also taking people from the production and from technical, from marketing, from events. And they are seeing the customer from different angles and they are meeting the, the places where the product is in use. They're hearing people's feedback. And this often it doesn't come to the top because they're out there doing the strategic work, but they really want their employees to talk about it. So uh, sustainability is a, an opportunity to collaborate across departments, but also from top to bottom. Uh, and, and it might be that one of the interns, technical interns or marketing interns has seen something that can set the company apart from their competitors if it's incorporated in the communication. It might be that they have a way to, let's say, start making videos with top management about what their product is doing that sets them apart from the competitors. But if they don't have an outlet to tell it, then no one knows about it. So again, if we come back to the, to the title of this, why sustainability is also a risk for many companies. Um, we know it from, for instance, uh, when you swim in the sea, everything below the surface, it's a little bit of a risk, right? You don't know what's in there. Is there a shark? Uh, are there like a huge whale coming at you? It could be, but it might also be if you dive beneath the surface, it's just really nice and there's little fish and there's colors and there's something to see. So very often when you don't dive beneath the surface, um, everything is a risk because you don't see it. But when it comes to sustainability, as soon as you start to dive in, you can take uh, sustainability as it's a big task, right? But when you start in one corner, then the opportunities start to arise and open up. And it actually lingers with the other ones. It connects with the other ones. So it means that now you've understood how you, uh, let's say, save energy and water. It means that now you also know how you can save on production materials or how you can set your carbon footprint. So it's, it's really a work in progress. And uh, many companies will start with trying to make a baseline, which is what we help them with. Some places they're far ahead and some places they haven't even started because they're not thinking about it. But that's really what sustainability is uh, all in all, is it's a work in progress. We can't all be number one from the beginning. And we shouldn't have to. It's it's not uh, it's not about being number one. It's really about doing one's best at the time given. Uh, yeah, and I think one of the most important things to talk about as well, uh, both here in, in the region and many places in the world, is we have a lot of stakeholders in companies. Right, we have both our uh, the ones who supply us with things, but we also have uh, investors. We have. Uh, board members, we have employees, we have uh, even families of employees, we have a lot of stakeholders that we don't communicate with. Uh, we are working with one of the large supermarket chains here in the UAE and we asked them, so, so who comes and shops in your, in your many shops here in the UAE? And they said, we don't know. I said, what do you mean? Is it because you don't know their name? So no, we have no clue because we have not uh, taking our time to figure out or even survey who is our customers. Hmm. That's very interesting, isn't it? Because it means that you're selling to an audience that knows you and comes to your shop maybe every day, but you have no clue who they are. So how can you know what their need is? And I think this one is 
very, very important for many companies nowadays because uh, consumers are changing. Um, and it's a shift from uh, the people a little bit older than me. Uh, and now the consumers are young. They have a lot of needs. They have a brand that they want to obtain. They are very online focused. They want to be able to share that they've made a system, uh, a sustainable purchase. And uh, they want to show that they are a good corporate citizen or an, a good citizen. So they ask a lot of companies, uh, but many times if they're not heard, they will find someone else who can really take their need uh, into consideration. And this is why many uh, traditional companies have, uh, is going to have a problem over the coming years if they don't become open and if they don't create platforms where they can listen to their, to their stakeholders and their customers, then there will be other companies who are smaller and easily transformable and flexible, who will have this open platform, who will listen and who will take the opportunity to dive into the market. Yeah, um, I think uh, that you were such a great uh, audience before. I will open up and say if there's any questions. Um, and thanks for the wonderful uh, in, um, your um, knowledge sharing. I was curious to know that, um, as you know, that uh, the scope one is easy to calculate. The scope two is, yeah, it is also manageable, but uh, the companies are really struggling with the scope three emissions yeah. measurement and calculation. So what's your thought regarding that? Well, I think this one, we should have a talk about this. I would love to help you with this, but um, all in all, it's it's building uh, it's building the platforms to take you to scope three, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, that's it's not a simple thing. Yeah. And if you have a, a baseline in some edges where you've you've come from scope one and scope two, yeah. but still need some foundation in some of the others, then it might be a reason for it to be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So, like, reach out to me, and I will help you the very best I can. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm just sharing a, a link now. Any any time any of you want to, then you can uh, you can book a consultation with me when you when you need it, um, and uh, I'll be happy to support you any way I can. Yeah, a LinkedIn contact, I want to say, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll ask, ask uh, Nita and the team to share the, the contact later, but you're most welcome to connect with me and ask specific questions or smaller big questions. We've helped uh, quite a few different size companies uh, transform and uh, the questions can be the same, but they can also be very specific depending on, on the industry they come from or even the country. Because when it comes to sustainability, of course, there's very different regulations, whether you come from Germany and, and EU or you're here in the UAE or in Asia. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I mean, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, what is your view about developing countries and developed countries? Like for me, it's like in Papua New Guinea, it's sustainability is a new concept altogether. And uh, for a developed country, it's like the concept is sort of very subbed. What is your view on that? Well, I think uh, I think developing countries are a very important question to have. I think in many regards, uh, African countries and many South African countries have an opportunity to build businesses that are way ahead of the businesses that are currently run in, uh, in many other places in the world. Because you have a lot of uh, natural resources, you have a lot of people who need jobs. So as soon as you start, for instance, you know the, the Sustainable Development Goals, and I would love to help you uh, uh, talk about them. Um, but the Sustainable Development Goals is really a guideline for either new companies or small companies to think about where the opportunities lie. 
it's a different way of the old fashioned way where I said, I want to be good at building, let's say, a car. But if there's no one in the market that wants you to, that wants to buy your car, what does it matter? But I think for Africa and, uh, and uh, other regions, you have an opportunity to survey what is it your fellow countrymen need? How can you both help them uh, build their uh, uh, job opportunities and use the resources you have? Um, because now you will see that there's a lot of countries and, and big regions that are moving into your territory to actually try and take your resources and sell them somewhere else. But you should be the ones developing those resources, right? You have, for instance, a lot of wood, a lot of uh, natural uh, wealth in this soil. You should make something about that. And I think that's uh, very important for the developing countries to take control and not just to uh, sell the resources too cheap to someone else who will make a lot more money out of it. But let's talk about it. I would love to help you, Jason. So set up something and I will help you. You can ask you another question. Yeah. Uh, the other question is concerning, uh, like we got uh, multinational companies. Mm -hmm. Multinational companies, I know that one of their requirements is a global report, reporting initiative where they report about sustainability matter, maybe human rights or stuff like that. And I realized that uh, from my perspective, uh, I realized, uh, and from my perspective, uh, from my experience as well, I realized that not many top leaders, they understand sustainability. That's why I get to realize that. And then to harmonize sustainability into making it as a business culture and then looking at uh, like multinational companies, they know that they will be leaving, but how can they harmonize their sustainability strategies with the government? Because at the end of the yeah. resource exploitation, you know that the governments are responsible for the people. Yeah. And how can they build that relationship, that sustainability relationship throughout the life cycle of the project or the resource extraction period to the closer? And that's where I realized that it's lacking. And for like for us at the junior level, when we try to raise that concern, it's sort of a big, uh, the gap there is so huge that our voices cannot be heard. And that's one of the problem I see, but I, didn't, I don't know whether that's in developed countries as well, where if you can set some light on that, it would be very perfect for me so I can understand more about the business culture elsewhere. And, compare with my country and Papua. I think let's definitely have a talk about it. It's, it's one of the key questions uh, in sustainability, how to harmonize uh, sustainability in different places. And I would let, set up a call with me and we'll have it uh, in, a, in a different session because it's difficult uh, to know also the regulations in your country, but I'll look it up. I have Thank a you. question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard you, actually, I'm a second year BBA student in Dubai, and I heard you were talking about, like, in terms how they can bring uh, more knowledge to the company, and hence I wanted to know, like, do you have, like, internships program for students? Yeah, we, we do, we do. Uh, uh, COVID is a funny thing, isn't it? So uh, I would love to help with interns in many different ways. So also connect with me. Um, and even I'll see if I can help you come into a, a different sort of company where, where there's more uh, work that fits your, your specific role. Um, but yeah, there's lots of opportunities right now. So let's connect after this. All right, thank you. I think it was very it was very good to hear you all and uh, like reach out i would love to help you with your questions because there's many questions but if a takeaway from this session should be that uh, sustainability is uh, is a topic in development okay we're in the initial stages someone uh, told me that we can we can uh, compare sustainability now with hr 25 years ago there was no one who was in an hr department um, there were people sitting and saying we have to take care of our employees, uh, but it was not a field being built. Uh, now, I'm not a really big fan of HR, uh, but it's, it's again, we're in a field being built. And the interesting thing about sustainability is that we can come from many, many different places in the company. And I think you all represent different, uh, different titles and different levels in the companies. 
but that we all have a part to play. And the, the companies who will move forward is the companies who find the people with the passion for moving it forward. It's going to take energy. It's going to take uh, courage. It's going to take you and your uh, top management time uh, to find out what your voice is. But when you do it, then you can set yourself apart from the competitors. You can really uh, change the way you communicate to your to your stakeholders and your audience. So, hope you get going and keep like keep the steam up, keep the motivation when it gets hard. Everybody else finds it hard as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, if if it's okay, if everybody could just turn on their videos for like one second, and maybe we can just take a picture. Um, and then we can just go for it. And so many different countries we all came from. I think that's the that's one of the most positive things about uh, COVID, that it's really it's erased some of the country borders that were there before. So let's let's keep up the like the sharing across countries. Um, because it's really valuable for them. Absolutely. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, turning on your video. If you can just say one, two, three, and cheese. Thank you so much.